I'd like to now solve equations using what's called the multiplication principle. But what I'd like you to understand is that every multiplication problem can be written as a division problem and vice versa. So while I'm going to call this the multiplication prob uh, principle, I need you to know that most often I'm going to say to you, let's divide both sides of an equation by such and such. Um, let me just illustrate that before we solve this equation. Please know that 6 divided by 3 is the same thing as if I took the whole number 6 and multiplied it by 1 third. Those two statements are exactly alike, and that's why, while this is called the multiplication principle, I am most often going to be saying to you that you're trying to isolate the variable x here, and there's a 3 in front of it, and this means 3, and there's a little understood dot right there, it means 3 times x. I want that to just become a 1x. So what do I do? To, what I do to both sides is I divide both sides by 3 because I want that to become a 1x. I don't typically write the 1 down. I just say x is equal to whatever the, whatever the arithmetic is right here. And 27 divided by 3 is equal to 9. Again, please remember that the original problem here was 3x equals 27. And so when you substitute in for x, a value of 9, what you have here is 3 times 9, or you can put parentheses around it, equals 27, and you can say, yup, 3 times 9 is 27, and 27 does equal 27, and you can check and see that you were correct. Again, when you're solving equations, which is a very important topic in algebra, you can check and see every time if you were correct. Let's do another one, I'm just going to try to have some varying signs in these problems. So next, I'd like to solve for x when it has a coefficient of a negative 2x. So to isolate the variable x, I have to divide by the whole coefficient. I have to divide both sides by a negative 2. Please don't forget that because this negative divided by a negative will give you a positive 1. If I divide the left side by a negative 2, I have to divide the right side by a negative 2. Again, those are gone. It gives me x equals and a positive 8 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 4. And again, I should check my answer. I'm not going to take the time to do that because I want to do some work with fractions in this clip. Let's see. Let's uh, take a look at 8x equals a negative 56. And if I want to get the variable x alone, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. So that will become a 1x. And then a negative 56 divided by a positive 8 will be a negative number, and that is a negative 7. Again, check it. We'll be doing some checks as I do a couple more. Let's do one with fractions. Okay. I have been saying to you in the last couple of problems, divide both sides by whatever the coefficient of x is. The coefficient of x in this problem is 4 fifths. So I could say to you that let's divide both sides by 4 fifths, but it would be much easier if I just said to you, let's instead multiply both sides by 5 fourths, the reciprocal. Let's multiply both sides of this equation by 5 fourths, because that would be 20 over 20, or 1 in front of the x. Again, i got to multiply the 16 by the 5 fourths. Whenever you have a whole number or an integer, um, it can be put over a 1 at any time. So when I have a whole number and I'm working with fractions, I keep that value high, recognizing that it's in the numerator, and I stick a 1 in the denominator so I don't lose the fact that that whole number is upstairs. Please remember to reduce if you can. And so I'm going to say that 4 goes into here once, and 4 goes into here 4 times, and then multiply straight across. So my answer is 4 times 5 which is 20, over 1 times 1 in the denominator, which is 1. And so I'll just write that answer as the value of 20. Let's check this one. I want you to see, and I guess I'll do it right, right here. So here's my check. The original problem was 4 fifths times x equals 16. And I'm going to put in the 20 right here for x. So I have 4 fifths times 20 over 1, to keep that 20 upstairs is all. Certainly you could call that 80 over 5, 
and we're wondering if that's equal to 16, or you could go ahead and say 5 goes into this denominator once and into this numerator 4 times, and 4 times 4 is indeed 16 over the 1, or it is equal to just 16. Let's do one where there's a negative sign in front of the variable x. So I have a negative x equals a negative 13. And what I need you to understand is that if there's no number written in front of the variable x, it's recognized to be a 1. So this one is really a negative 1x equals a negative 13. And so what you need to do to both sides is divide both sides by that negative 1. And that makes this become just a positive x, a positive 1x. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 13 divided by 1 is 13. I'm not going to take the time to check that one. Let's look at uh, one that involves a negative sign again. So a negative m over 3 um, equals 10. And so what I'd like you to recognize in this one, a coefficient right here of 1 with this being um, a negative uh, 1 in front of that variable m. So I'm going to write that as a negative 1 third times m equals 10. And I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this fraction. The reciprocal is sine and all, so I'm going to have a positive 3 over a negative 1. The sine could be anywhere, really. But bottom line is this negative number times this negative number will be a positive. I am multiplying by a negative 3 here. I'm going to come over here and write it just as you saw it over here. Again, um, you know, please remember, 3 goes into there once, into there once, and negative 1 goes into here once, and here once. So you're left with m. And 3 uh, I'm sorry, 10 times 3 is 30, divided by a negative 1 is just a negative 30. I could have had the sign up here. I could have just called that the number a negative 3. And 10 times a negative 3 is a negative 30. Let's see, yeah, we have time for one more um, fairly involved fraction. Let's take a negative 3 eighths x equals a negative 15 over 16. I'm going to grab my red pen. The reciprocal of a negative 3 eighths is a negative 8 thirds. I'm going to do this in red so you can see this a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 8 thirds, since that is the reciprocal of a negative 3 eighths. So over here, I'm going to multiply by a negative 8 thirds. And I'm not going to pay much mind to the signs, except for the fact on the right-hand side, a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive answer. So I'm only going to pay attention initially over here, again, also remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, and this 24 over 24 is 1, so you have a 1x over here. Let's go ahead and reduce this. Um, 8 goes into here once and into here twice, and 3 goes into here once and into there five times. I'm ignoring the negative signs because I've already taken care of them right here. And in the numerator, I have 5 times 1, which is 5, and the denominator, 2 times 1, which is 2. Let's check this one. I think I better erase so that we can do that. So my answer was 5 halves. I'm going to go ahead and erase my work. Try to put the original problem back up. So that was a negative 15 over 16, I hope. And I'm going to plug in 5 halves for x right here. So a negative 3 eighths times 5 halves, and I wonder if that equals a negative 15 over 16. And so I'm going to go ahead and multiply the numerators together right here. A negative 3 times a positive 5 is a negative 15, and 8 times 2 is 16. That is what the right side is equal to, and I get to stop and say I know I got that problem correct, I solved correctly by checking after the fact. This is called the multiplication principle. Remember, we divide both sides by the same value, or we multiply both sides by the same value in order to isolate the variable x.